Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Megneus and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Dinosaurs. Interesting phenomenon actually. Remember when I said that approximately 25% of our viewers would disappear after the first 15 seconds of a video? Well for the past two episodes I went back and I checked, I checked all the stats and apparently in the first 13 seconds or so we've only been losing 15% of our audience. Isn't that interesting? After I called them out on their, their lack of loyalty to us and our channel and our awesomeness and our shreddedness and all that wonderful stuff, people, about, about 10% started, you know, watching the video longer. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, welcome back everyone. My name is Magnius. You guys all know that. I'm so sorry that for the past three days I haven't uploaded a video, by the way. I've been very busy with something else, another project of mine, which has nothing to do with this path that we're going to continue making. But nonetheless, you guys know Timeshot, right? Pretty sure you guys know Timeshot. So Timeshot had a very special event that maybe you guys didn't even know about. So Timeshot, we decided that we wanted to do something special for the fans. We continuously say how, like, all oh, the servers for the fans, etc, etc. And so some of us got to talking about what exactly that meant and what exactly could we do to do something special for the fans that most other servers didn't do, most other YouTube-only private servers. And we came to the conclusion that one of the awesome things that we could do is we could release the server map for a download. And that's precisely what we did, and that was the reason that I was unable to make videos for quite a while. Now, I can explain why. The reason that I wasn't able to, uh, to make videos for a while was that I was very busy doing a very special event in the server, getting it saved into the, uh... Oh, what was that? Oh, that, oh, that was our Sabercat, okay, I was very confused. But yeah, I was doing a very special event, I made a special treat for all of you wonderful viewers that love to watch our videos, and I put that in the Timeshot server. So if you watch the Timeshot server series, and you enjoy, you know, seeing Poet run around, and Two Girls, One Minecraft, and all of those wonderful people, and Sigils, and MK, and, and Liam, and Dake, and, and... Dake. Did I just say Dake? Jake, and Dave. Oh, this, this doesn't look good at all. Oh, I thought this would look nice, but actually it doesn't look very good. Ooh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Do you think it's okay if I just if I just leave it like this and don't do the uh the extra pieces right here? Maybe. But yeah, so I did a very special event in Time Shot and I put lots of secrets all over the map, and I mean all over the map. It took me like at least four or five hours to get the entire thing done, collecting materials and writing things, and oh my gosh. It took a really freaking long time. But thankfully, I can say now with certainty. That it, uh, it has been, maybe I want to turn this one. It has been completed! And if you go to the link in the video description, you can find the place where we uploaded the map download. So that you can go and download the Timeshot server for yourself and play it offline in a single player game. So that you too can not only spoil a few episodes of Timeshot, so that you can find out our secret builds that we're currently working on. Very up to date, literally we just released it like a day or two ago. Uh, actually a day ago. I think it was about 24 hours at this point. But you can find a link to that in the video description. And if you go and check that out, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. If you go to my house, which you guys should know where my house is if you watch the series. If you go and check out my house, you will find the beginning chest to begin that little, little special event. And should you do that, you will find some marvelous writing that I have done as well as learn a little bit more about me personally, things that you may not have already known, but, you know, maybe you did, since I have mentioned them in other videos, but nonetheless, I'm not going to spoil anything. And I hope you guys don't look too closely into screenshots and other things like that, because some people have already completed it. But nonetheless... Oh, there we go. Thank goodness there are bricks available, because, oh man, I was, I was gonna be sad there for a moment. But yeah, if you guys would like to check out that map, and just find it in the video description below. It's actually hosted on Reddit, on reddit.com slash r slash timeshot. So over there in our subreddit, you can find it. 
And I would love if you guys would tweet screenshots of it to me as you're doing it and stuff like that, because I, I really did spend a lot of time doing that, and I would be so sad if no one other than members of Timeshot did it. Everyone who's going to do it on Timeshot, by the way, they've all promised to give, like, a two-week layover between the episodes where they do it, so that there's uh, there aren't too many episodes going out with spoilers, so that you guys have plenty of time to do it yourselves, so you'll have about a week and a half at this point. For you to do it. I think I think this is is that right? No, I think I think I did that very wrong. Yes, I did. Alright. So please go and do that. I would love it and it would make me very happy. And I would feel so I don't know, so I have no idea what word I'm looking for. Someone help me, I have no idea what word I'm Oh, uh, anyway, it would it would make me feel very accomplished to know that people had played and enjoyed the thing that I had made for you guys, so I hope you guys do that. Click on the video video description link below. And what else are we going to talk about today? We have some very bad news, unfortunately. Some news that I'm very depressed about, personally. It's uh, news about SpaceX. Their, their next upcoming Falcon 9 launch that was planned to go for the 30th has been delayed to we don't know when. That's literally the time. We have no idea when it's been delayed to... The whole thing is a very strange story, apparently. So you guys know that... Ooh, I don't want to jump down there. You guys know that the next launch is going to be from Florida's Cape Canaveral, which is actually a NASA facility. So it's going to be launched from a NASA facility, not a SpaceX facility. SpaceX doesn't actually own a facility yet for launching rockets, I don't think. But it's supposed to be launched from Cape Canaveral, and that is a problem. Because... Cape Canaveral has apparently had a fire somewhere or something like that. I'm not exactly sure of all of the details, but yeah, that's that's fine for that one. But so there was a fire or something concerning another rocket launch, which is apparently very badly damaged the facilities where SpaceX was going to launch their Falcon 9. And as a result of that, we're, we're not really sure when we're going to be able to see the next Falcon 9 launch, which is incredibly depressing because this was supposed to happen like... In the middle of February, or something like that, and it continuously gets delayed the longer and longer, and we really, really want to see this thing get done. Because it's the one with the, the freaking landing legs on the rocket, man, and we gotta see that. Oh, I want to see it so badly, so unfortunately that's been delayed till who knows when. We'll find out later. Oh, maybe, maybe like a month from now. Oh, I'm so sad, guys. I really don't know what to do. I was so looking forward to this launch. But it's okay, we shall endure. And we will continue to save up money so we can go to Mars. SpaceX, we're counting on you. Okay, what, how do I do this? How do I, how do I bring this in? How do I bring this together? I feel... Maybe here? Should I take it all the way here? I don't think that looks very good. Yeah, let's let's take it here instead. We are also going to talk about some, some dinosaur stuffings, if you guys are interested in, in hearing some dinosaur stuff, which I'm sure you are because you're watching this series and we always talk about dinosaur stuffings. Today, we are going to be discussing a dinosaur that several people requested. Let's see, their names were Brianna Albright, of course, you. So there's Brianna, there's Jazzy, and Sophia. All three of these people really wanted to hear about Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus, very difficult name to pronounce, but very interesting dinosaur nonetheless. By the way, guys, this, this freaking diamond shovel, look at this thing. Efficiency 4 and Unbreaking 3. This is a godly, godly shovel. Like, I accidentally destroy extra stuff that I don't actually want to destroy with this. Uh, oh, very, very gent- Oh god, no. I try to be gentle and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work, man. But yes, Parasaurolophus. This thing, just so you have a general idea of what it looks like before we go into discussing it. It was a hadrosaur, so those things with the, uh, the tube things on their heads, they used to make sounds like maybe something like a didgeridoo, I don't know. I actually have no idea, please don't take that seriously. That's just me being, being Megneus. Did I run out of wood? Are you serious? Oh my gosh, I need to get more wood in the middle of an episode. Oh, hello Mr. Pigman, how you doing? I miss Hades sometimes, guys. Hades, I miss him so much. 
But, um... But yeah, so Parasaurolophus... Sauralophus? Parasaurolophus was a, uh... Hadrosaur dinosaur with a tube thingy on its head. It lived during the mid to late Cretaceous... Oh, we have some more clay. I did not expect that. Okay, let's... let's throw this clay in here. Where in the world did that clay come from? I have no idea. But yes, it lived in the mid to late Cretaceous period, so somewhere between like 74 million years ago and 65 million years ago. It was among the last of the dinosaurs to have lived. It actually had a pretty large range for a dinosaur. It definitely lived in North America, but several places in North America. Where am I going? I'm trying to find an axe. Pretty sure there's an axe in here somewhere, right? No? Is, this, is my axe in this chest over here? Since I'm currently in the process of building something, my building chest. Oh, no, I have the axe on me right here. What in the world am I doing? Let's go to sleep, though. I, I don't want to deal with creepers and, and skeletons and nonsense. But yeah, so somewhere around Alberta, I believe. Alberta may have been one of the first finds, but they found remains of Parasaurolophus in Alberta, as well as in Utah and New Mexico. Now, Utah is a very famous place for dinosaur finds. It's famous for a lot of things, however... Uh, dinosaur finds, Utah has a, a lot of bone pits and things like that, so it's a great place to go if you want to find some, some new kinds of dinosaurs. And New Mexico, so New Mexico all the way up to Alberta, that's a pretty large range for a hadrosaur. So, something that those hadrosaurs can be proud of, I suppose. But Parasaurolophus was sort of a, an interesting hadrosaur in that it was quite large. Like uh, m most dinosaurs that we talk about, I don't think we really talk about tiny dinosaurs very often because people don't really want to hear about tiny dinosaurs. Uh, I need to get some more oak. Oak, oak, oak. Why is that still here, just floating? I don't like this at all. What are you doing? Come on, reach, reach. There we go. Nice. Get that sapling. But yeah, so it was pretty large. It was 9.5 meters long, which is about 31 feet, I believe. It's pretty large. Imagine a three-story building on its side. And it was quite heavy, too. I believe it was 2.5 tons, which is about 5,500 pounds. So yeah, one of those one of those larger dinosaurs. It was, of course, like all hadrosaurs, not a carnivore, so there's nothing that you would have to worry about other than it trampling you to death. But it was an herbivore. Is Wait. Slimes? I don't think I've ever killed a slime on this, this save before. Not that I can remember. Slime, where are you? Slime? What in the world? Why did I not fill this in when I... Where is that slime? But yeah, so, anyway, as I was saying, so it was quite a large hadrosaur. It, um, why am I, why do I keep pronouncing it hadrosaur? I think, I think Korean's having a, a strange effect on my English ability. Because, uh, we, we do that in Korean, actually, when we speak Korean. Sort of, uh, S sounds become slightly like Z sounds when they're surrounded by vowels. Random tangent, I know, but nonetheless, thought you guys may be interested. But yeah, so this thing was pretty large. There's not a whole lot that we know about it, other than that, I suppose. Just the normal hadrosaur type of stuff. It, uh... Pretty sure we don't have a complete fossil specimen of it, I'm pretty sure... Should I, should I just leave this here? Like this? Pretty sure this would be fine. Yeah. This doesn't really look that good though right here, maybe... Hmm. Pretty sure I have those stairs. Yeah, I have stairs. Let's see. Hmm. That was sort of perfect. I don't really know what to do about that being so perfect. Huh. And right here. Here would be the last place. Alright. Uh, I don't like that being empty there. Let's go ahead and throw some sand in there. Oop. Oop. And... 
All right. I'm pretty sure that's good. This this sort of ends this side of our path. Pretty sure I don't need another another leaf thing right here. I'm pretty sure this is nice. Need to need to sort of decide what to do with this thing right here because this doesn't look very nice at all. If you guys have any ideas for this, please let me know below in the comments. Yeah, there we go. It's a nice little thing. Okay, so now that that's done and we continue to talk about Parasaurolithus, I will go ahead and return to the Galileo enclosure because I need to show you guys some some of the stuff that I've done in the Galileo enclosure off camera as well as decide what to do about it for future stuffins. But yeah, so I was reading about Parasaurolithus and I would just like to point out how incredibly happy I am by the way that you guys know so many dinosaurs that I've never heard of because I knew hadrosaurs. I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone knows hadrosaurs. However, Parasaurolophus was not actually an individual that I had heard about or known about, so I, I learned quite a bit by reading. It's just not a whole lot of new information in terms of, you know, how it's special compared to other dinosaurs, so we're not going to go into all of it. But, hello Galileo. So yeah, before I say anything else, uh, I took out the blocks behind this thing right here because there were some dirt blocks and stone blocks and it looks sort of out of place and I, I replaced those. So there should be a uniform block color behind all of these fences. I also, I haven't done it for the upper levels yet, but I did go around and I took out all of the gray stone and the, uh, the gravel and stuff like that for these blocks right here and replace them so that they all look uniform. So if you... I'm pretty sure I did the, the next level up. I did that... Maybe... When did I do that? When I was actually... Ooh, Galileo, hello. Please get away. Pretty sure I did that one when I was actually building the enclosure. So I don't have to worry about that one. However, this one, I probably need to go around the uh, outer edges for this one as well, just to make sure that it looks nice and pretty. Like I did here. Yeah, this this outer edge right here. I don't know. Did I do this all the way around? I'm not sure if I did. I think I may see some dirt over there. Oh well. I'm not really too worried about it. But this this is definitely something that would I have to decide what to do. This thing. Uh do I I do not even have the blocks on me, but let's Let's jump down here and see if we can hold ourselves steady. So I need to fill that in and... Ah, oh, go away, Galileo. Yeah, there's definitely dirt behind this one. I need to take that out and fix that as well. Now this little thing here, this little room, right? So this room isn't really supposed to be something that Galileo can put his head in. So we, we need some sort of barrier to stop Galileo from putting his head in here. I was thinking either glass or maybe... I don't know, maybe, maybe we could do like an extension of this sort of wall thing to cover it up here. I don't know. Hmm. Some of you guys gave me like ideas about bridges and things to put over the enclosure, but I'm not exactly sure if that would work out very well with uh, Galileo clipping through things and stuff. Clipping, clipping doesn't really work very well for this, uh, this thing. Well, I guess I should say that clipping happens far too often and uh... The hitboxes? Is it a hitbox? I don't I don't know. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Ignore that. But nonetheless, Parasaurolophus, let's see, the, the main thing that I learned about Parasaurolophus was that hadrosaurs, we all know that they have tube things on their heads, right? And well, I knew that that was probably used for communication and maybe to, like, try to get mates and, you know, love songs and courtship and things. The same things that dinosaurs use a lot of stuff for, but... One thing that I didn't consider when I when I was thinking about hadrosaurs is because what exactly am I looking for? I'm looking for stone bricks and I guess stone as well. And I definitely need these cobblestone walls. I'll grab some more cobblestone just in case. Yes, I think I think this is good. All right. So let's just go on and jump back out. But their tube thing on their heads, I knew that there was a very, very complex system of air passageways in there. Basically, their equivalent of... Oh, and Thor's back, by the way. And their equivalent of, of sinuses, of nasal passages in that tube. 
And that tube is pretty awesome. And I know that we had a couple of theories on what it was used for before, such as, you know, mating rituals and courtship and communication and things like that. But one of the things that I completely forgot about that I, I really breakdancing Galileo, apparently, something that I really shouldn't have forgotten about was the fact that also those those passageways, those blood passageways in the, the nasal tube or whatever you want to call it, those were probably also very useful for one other thing. Probably also very useful for thermoregulation. If you guys don't know what thermoregulation is, it basically means like regulating temperature, controlling the temperature of the blood. Now, you guys probably know about elephants. Elephants are pretty awesome. Elephants use their ears for thermoregulation, meaning that they... Is this the one that needs it? Pretty sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make our... Oh wait, no. No, I didn't want to do that. Uh, okay, there we go. So they use their ears for thermoregulation, meaning they, they pass blood through their ears, and because their ears are so thin, so very large, it helps to cool down their blood, or to, uh... Yeah, to cool down their blood so that they don't overheat and stuff like that. And uh, depending on whether they're hot or cold, they can do various things with their ears so that they, they don't lose too much heat. They don't fan them about as it begins to get cold. Now, Parasaurolophus, of course, did not have ears, not that I'm aware of. At least not external ears. But they did have that giant nose tube thingy. And that thing had a lot of blood vessels in it. And when I say a lot, I mean, you really have no idea just exactly how much this had. They, they ran it through a special spectrometer machine -y thingy that I don't even know what it is. And it was absolutely filled, oh no, absolutely filled with blood vessels. And probably if that were used for thermoregulation, it would be a very good tool for regulating body temperature of the Parasaurolophus. Because it had so much blood going through its nose thingy. It shouldn't need to cool down very quickly, which brains often do need to cool down for various... What? Galileo, go away! You're getting in the way of my blocks! Go away! Thank you. But yeah, brains, the blood in the brain needs to stay a, a pretty constant temperature and it doesn't... It can't... It can't get too hot. And if it were necessary, Parasaurolophus could have used... Is this... No, they look fine to me. Galileo, please move. I can't see anything. No, that's right too. That's right. Okay, so maybe all of these are, are already done. Maybe it's just the, uh, the little area. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's just the little area in here that needs to be done. Is this? No? No, apparently that's fine. Huh. Is it this one then? Yeah, it, it must be this one. And this is unfortunate because I, I don't want to be on this ladder while I do this. This takes forever. But anyway. So by running air through its nose tube thingy, Parasaurolophus could have very quickly cooled down its blood that was traveling to and from its brain. Probably to its brain would be far more helpful. So that's probably what it did. And again, that's that's just a hypothesis. Um, I guess it could be called a, a theory because there are quite a few animals which do this sort of similar thing in the world today. So you could use that as evidence to create a working theory rather than a simple hypothesis. But I don't. I'm not exactly sure which one of these. It could have been all of them. I mean, it doesn't just have to be one of them. But which of these theories is the most accepted in academics at the moment? Academia. Yeah, it's definitely this one that we need to work on. I, I clearly chose the wrong one, which is not very good at all. But oh well, it doesn't really matter. I can do it off camera, no problem. It basically concludes all of the information about Parasaurolophus that I could possibly tell you. Simply because the rest of it's basically the same as all the other, you know, mid to late Cretaceous herbivores. Do -do -do -do. It's moments like these where I wonder if I should just end the video. I probably should. That's awkward. 
What to do? Why am I so awkward? Oh yeah, by the way, there's one more thing since I just remembered. Over there on Twitch, since you know, we, we love to do those live streams over there on Twitch TV. If you guys haven't watched them yet, you totally should cough cough. But if you haven't, then even without you, we have... Oh, I didn't want to do that. We have managed to get 3,000 followers on Twitch. Probably about half the size that we need to be to get a Twitch partnership. So if you want to help support me in getting that Twitch partnership so that I'm, I'm no longer just, you know, doing, doing Twitch streaming just for the fun of it and because I love you guys, then you should go over to Twitch. You should hit that follow button. You should come and watch our streams every day at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 11.30 GMT. That would be great. I would love that. And you guys would be so amazing if you did that to help me. <sighs> and on that note, I am completely done begging and completely d done talking about dinosaurs. And I'm going to finish this stuff off camera since I messed it up so badly. Thank you so much everyone for watching. My name is Magnius and I will see you next time.